Hello, I'm Joya Delgado-Harris, and I'm pleased to moderate the second of a series of discussions regarding breast cancer screening for women. In this segment, we'll be focusing on insurance coverage and women who are at higher risk for getting breast cancer. Joining me are Dr. Richard Winder, Chief Cancer Control Officer of the American Cancer Society, and Dr. Lisa Newman, Director of the Breast Oncology Program at Henry Ford Health System and longtime society volunteer leader. And we're also pleased to have with us Samantha Elmore, Lauren Gerald, Ginger Crawick, who will be asking those questions that are most important to them. Dr. Winder, let's start with you. The American Cancer Society Breast Cancer Screening Guideline encourages women at age 40 to start having a discussion with their doctor about the breast cancer screening plan that's best for them. And they have the opportunity to begin screening at 40 if they choose. Does this option mean that insurance companies will stop paying for mammograms to women who are age 40? Well, we made it very clear uh, in our guideline that the American Cancer Society supports insurance coverage for all women, 40 all the way through the end of her period of in being involved with breast cancer screening every year if she and their clinician decide that that's right for them. Uh, and it, it, the insurance coverage issue is, is complicated because it, uh, uh, there's a law in the Affordable Care Act that links coverage to a scoring system that's used by the U.S. Preventive Services Task Force. And I think that there was some confusion with our guideline when we used these shared decision recommendations that this would, by law, somehow impact insurance coverage. And in fact, it's not true. Uh, the law is in no way linked to the ACS guideline. But we made a point, because of this potential confusion, of adding a, an important paragraph to the guideline saying that no woman should face, face a financial barrier uh, to screening. Uh, if she chooses to start at 40 and then chooses to continue uh, having a mammogram every year throughout her life. So, um, in, in fact, the American Cancer Society Cancer Action Network is working in Congress to make sure that coverage is guaranteed. That's a concern. I mean, it may not be legislation at this point, but if there are new guidelines, it has to be something that the insurance companies are looking at. It, can you talk a little bit more about how the American Cancer Society may be advocating for those women that want to begin screenings at 40 years old and won't be impacted by insurance regulations? Yeah, no, your point's exactly right. And we have seen some, uh, just a little bit of activity in a few states that where the insurance company has questioned coverage. Uh, so we're going to remain very active at the state level, just as we are at the federal level, to uh, make sure that coverage is uh, guaranteed for women 40 and over. Some, a few states, just a few, actually have a law that links breast cancer coverage to our guideline. Uh, and that's why we added that paragraph. So if you're being consistent with our guideline, we made it as clear as can be that our guideline recommends insurance coverage for all women 40 and over. So your concern is legitimate ones. One, we share that uh, we, we can't control what the insurance industry decides uh, is right for coverage. And there may be some challenges in a few venues to coverage, uh, but uh, our position is quite clear. So uh, we're going to continue to advocate for that state level and federally. Perhaps you've covered this already, <clears throat> but could you just very briefly say the differences between average and high risk? Yeah. Well, it's a spectrum. And uh, when we talk about the average risk, we're generally talking about the general population of women who don't have any red flags indicating that they are more likely to get breast cancer compared to another woman. One red flag that a woman is at increased risk for getting breast cancer would be that family history. Again, family history including multiple relatives with breast cancer, um, ovarian cancer in the family, men with breast cancer in the family. There are some uh, non-hereditary risk factors that can identify a woman at higher likelihood of developing breast cancer, such as certain breast biopsy findings. Some breast biopsies are interpreted as being completely benign, but if they have specific microscopic patterns, it might indicate a woman who is at higher risk for getting breast cancer in the future, even though that particular biopsy was benign. And so it is very important for any woman who's had a breast biopsy, even if they were told that that biopsy was negative, that it did not have cancer, it's important for the woman to understand exactly what that biopsy showed. 
If, she, if it did show a pattern indicating that she's at higher risk for breast cancer in the future, she might need additional screening studies. She might be a candidate to take medication that can reduce her risk of getting breast cancer. The other th a couple of features that can indicate higher risk of getting breast cancer would include the medical history. Some women have re received uh, radiation treatments for certain types of cancers, such as lymphoma, and sometimes these cancers occur at young ages where the radiation to the chest wall causes a damage to the young breast tissue that can predispose the woman to getting breast cancer in the future. And so this would be another indication for a woman to consider additional screening modalities or even getting mammograms at younger ages. Smith, I know you have a question, but I just something you said just struck me. I am so glad you clarified the family history because I was diagnosed at age 34 with breast cancer, and I was so used to filling out medical history, asking about mother, sister, grandmother. But I also had two first cousins that were much older than me that had breast cancer. So I wasn't even thinking about that first cousin relationship, but you explained it. I think women need to know more about that and really explore their family history on maternal Great and question. paternal sides. Yes, and, yes, and, important and, point, maternal and paternal. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I, I was just going to pile on on yeah. this issue of, the, of, of knowing the father. You know, yes. people think breast cancer, they just think about their mother's side. Mm -hmm. And getting the family history from both sides is critically important. And that's something that women should really be starting at a young age. Yeah. Because really. if you are in that very high risk group, you don't want to wait till you're 40 to start finding out your family history. And sometimes you have to track down that one aunt who knows everybody's family history on both sides you know, <laughs> and really get down to the details. As an African American woman, I know women in my community and other minority communities tend to develop more aggressive forms of breast cancer. Um, so what are the implications for those of us who tend to be diagnosed with breast cancer earlier and, and are at later stages of the disease. Yes, Samantha, that is an accurate observation. Uh, historically, if the lifetime likelihood of getting breast cancer in African American women was lower than it uh, has been in white American women, although those incidence rates are rising and are actually pretty comparable. Despite that difference in incidence rates, however, African American women have historically and consistently had higher death rates, mortality rates from breast cancer. That disparity, that death rate disparity is actually increasing. And so these issues do need to be taken into account when we counsel our patients about screening that is appropriate for the individual. African American women are also more likely to be diagnosed with breast cancer at younger ages. The frequency of premenopausal breast cancer is higher among African American breast cancer patients compared to white American breast cancer patients. And so the American Cancer Society was very thoughtful in uh, incorporating uh, flexibility into the guidelines so that patients as we've said here repeatedly today, need to talk to their providers about their individualized risk when making that decision about the exact age to start the first mammogram and the frequency of those mammograms. Perfectly legitimate for African American women to be that much more concerned about screening mammography needs in the younger age ranges. Yeah, there's a higher percent of African American women who face poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things we're very committed to, uh, you know, a guideline alone is just the first step. So we're really committed to making sure that everyone has equal opportunity to, to get high quality evaluation of something found on a mammogram. If a cancer is found, that, that every woman has an equal opportunity to, to get high quality treatment in a timely fashion, to have full access to treatment all the way through. That's not going to cause that disparity to disappear. Sure. But we have research that shows that a higher percentage of African American women actually have received no treatment at all for their breast cancer a year later. So we have a lot of work to do as a nation to really narrow this, this persistent disparity uh, in breast cancer, which is uh, really it's a source of great concern for all of us. What do you say to the conspiracy theorists that believe that, you know, the doctors are in the back pockets of the insurance industry, and the insurance industry is the one who's really funding these studies and telling us what the guidelines should be. I mean, what? how do we combat that? Well, I'll take the first shot. I'd be curious what, uh, what Dr. Newman thinks, too. But uh, And I have had the chance to, to have those conversations mm -hmm. with 
with women. So I, I have one advantage specifically about our own guideline and that I know how the process worked. And, and uh, that's why th th there was no input at all of the insurance industry. And by the way, there's actually also no consideration of cost. There is a feasibility. It, a screening test that costs $10,000 per person is not feasible for the whole population. It, uh, there's no way we'd have the resources to do it. So we do look at an overall feasibility. But of course, mammography is quite affordable for us to do for a whole population, and cost does not enter into it. Uh, and, and our guideline committee was specifically told that, no input at all from the insurance industry. And most importantly, that very key paragraph I keep pointing people to where we make it very clear that we, that, that in fact, uh, any woman who chooses to start at 40 and continue annually for her whole life should not face a financial barrier to it. Uh, that's really a different issue, though, than, in a way, the broader question, and that is, uh, is there real trust you know, between, mm -hmm. between uh, women, between the communities they live in, uh, between African-American communities, the healthcare system as a whole, the American Cancer Society, and I think we have to earn that trust every day. I don't think there's a simple formula to, to, to getting those fears uh, addressed. It's just something we have to be committed to and keep working. Yeah, I uh, completely agree with Dr. Wender. The issue of mistrust is a heartbreaking reality, and that reality causes harm. When patients, men, women alike, when they lose trust in the healthcare system, it uh, leads to them being um, cared for in a delayed fashion for any number of health care thre health threats. And so, as Dr. Wynn just said, we have to re-earn our patient's trust every day, and uh, we have to get past this for the good of our public health. Well, that brings us to the end of this segment. Ladies, thank you for your questions, and doctors, thank you for your thoughtful responses. So as a reminder, this is the second of a series of three discussions about breast cancer screening and how women can take control of our breast cancer health. If you haven't already viewed the other segments, I encourage you to do so. Thanks for watching.